Dr. Ian Cutris. Oh no, oh no, oh no. What did Dr. Cutris do? Five minutes later. Yes, that is true, Dr. Cutris, but you're not wrong. So he's right. We don't have consistency right now. I just still don't care. I can understand his argument too. It just doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Man, what a fuck. What's your minimum specification? So that was a short clip from Linus's recent WAN show, where he pulled up one of my tweets complaining about one of his videos. In that video, he was using one of the specifications for memory incorrectly, and I kind of pointed it out based on a tweet I did earlier in the year. Let's just go over what that tweet was. So I posted this a few days ago, and uh, it just simply says ARG. And what we have here is Linus with one of these small little handheld machines. Uh, and the thing I've highlighted here is the fact that they've used 4266 megahertz memory. And uh, it all comes back down to this 2nd of May tweet that I did about how we should talk about DRAM as a community. So a kit of DDR4 3600 runs at 3600 mega transfers per second, not actually megahertz. It actually runs at 1800 megahertz, and that's why you see uh, 1800 megahertz in CPU-Z, because it does two transfers per hertz. So as part of this video, I'm going to explain why this is the case, but actually what we should do to solve this problem. So the crux of the matter here that I'm trying to draw attention to is um, technical literacy and accuracy. How these uh, things that we deal with computers have units like uh, gigahertz, megahertz, uh, gigabytes, uh, you know, like length, width, height, weight. These are all units that are technically mean something with relation to what it's talking about. And my goal here is just to maintain that we have a level of accuracy. Now, in order to explain some of this and some of the criticisms I've had about my stance here, I'm going to actually talk you through what the argument is all about. So if you have some memory like this, this is a G-Skill Trident Z Royal memory, nice shiny shiny, and it's listed as DDR4-3600. And this is what you'll get when you uh, buy this memory. And everywhere online, you know, it says DDR4-3200, 3600, 3800. But how memory actually works relies on its clock cycle. So a clock cycle is a standard square wave, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down. And that runs for a memory kit of 3600 at 1800 megahertz. But the point is, when you open your CPU Z tab and you see 1800 megahertz, that is the data rate of the signal from your CPU to your memory. And the reason why we get 3600 from 1800 is that a transfer can occur on either the rise of your clock signal or the fall of your clock signal, the leading edge and the rising edge. This is how we get double data rate. When we move to quad data rate memory, we're actually going to be taking four reads per cycle. So the memory may still be running at 1800 megahertz, but in QDR, that will actually be running at 7200 mega transfers per second. So for every one cycle, you're doing two transfers in DDR, and for every one cycle, you're doing four transfers in QDR. Now, this all comes down to what we mean by one hertz. Hertz is usually written as a, you know, a, an event per second, but it's actually a bit more complex than that. It's actually one cycle per second. Hertz comes from the need to have a periodic timing. If something happens at one hertz, it happens one time, every second. If it happens at 2 hertz, it's 2 times every second. When we're counting DDR memory transfers on the leading edge or the rising edge of the clock, people are saying, well, that's you're doing two elements, so that's 2 hertz, not just two transfers. And the point is that you can do a memory transfer, you can do a memory transfer, or you can't do a memory transfer. It's not periodic because it's not constant. That's where it falls down on the per cycle rule. And if you actually look at the units uh, of this calculation, the thing that you do a lot in maths, physics, chemistry, you know, science and research, is that you coalesce the standard units of the system. So if a hertz is one cycle per second, and you're doing two transfers per cycle, then the cycles cancel out and you get transfers per second, and that's the unit of memory transfer. 
So another way to think about it is uh, with music. Now, standard music uh, might have 142 beats per minute. That's, you know, that's the equivalent of Hertz. So you have the regular cadence of dun, 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 142 beats per minute. Now, on every beat, you can play multiple notes. So in, say, a minute, which has 142 beats, you could be playing 200 notes. But you don't say it's 200 beats per minute. It's still 142 beats per minute because that's the nature of the sound. In Linus's video, he actually does perhaps one of the best examples, uh, defenses of my position that I think can come up with on the fly. He does it really well. Let's have a look. This is kind of akin to AMD or Intel getting it in their head that they can start branding their CPUs by how many instructions on average they can execute per clock. And then, you know, Intel coming out and saying, well, here, hold on a second. Uh, that would be extremely confusing if Intel and AMD were to change that branding and come out overnight and say, hey, we don't have four or five gigahertz CPUs anymore. Now they run at 20 or 30 gigahertz because we're counting how many instructions they can execute per cycle. But he simply says, well, look, if a core can do three instructions per cycle, and the core is running at, say, 3 gigahertz, we still say the core is 3 gigahertz. We don't say the core is running at 9 giga instructions per second. We could say it's 9 giga instructions per second, but if we were to call that 9 gigahertz, which is kind of what we're doing with memory here, then it would be incorrect and people would be misled. So I've collated all the comments made on my Twitter post and also ones that came through Linus's viewers when he did his WAN show. And I've kind of summarized them here into nine specific points and I'm gonna go through them one by one. So first one is no one cares. Well, if no one cares, then you don't mind me changing, but don't mind me making sure that everything is in a mega transfers per second. Two, it doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter, then you don't mind everything changing to mega transfers per second. Three, Megahertz is correct because it's still per second. I think I've addressed this, uh, the fact that Hertz is a cycle per second. And on memory, you're not doing a transfer every rising and leading edge um, of that clock cycle. The clock is consistent. That's why it has the Hertz. Mega transfers per second is a theoretical maximum if you did a transfer on every uh, rise and fall of the clock cycle. But because you don't need to, it's not a cyclical nature. Therefore, it's not a Hertz measurement. Four, everyone calls it megahertz, therefore it's more accessible. Now, at, probably out of all the arguments, this is probably the one that I would most agree with, but technically I still disagree with it. And this is because if it was just simple English, yeah, sure, the nature of words changes. Uh, and in the uh, immortal words of our dear Lina Sebastian, words are about communicating. The words are about communication. But the point is, that's for descriptive words. What we're talking about here is an engineering term, and engineering is very specific. If you get your engineering wrong, if you use the wrong units, then I'm sorry, your rocket is flying into the mountain. Now, the point is that if everyone understands it, therefore it's more accessible. Me, Linus, I don't know, PC World, Gamers Nexus, Hardware Unbox, everybody who's talking about memory, who's talking about technology, is here to either entertain or educate or both. And the only way we're going to do that is by making sure that we use the correct units at the right time. Educating you guys, uh, for those who don't know the stuff that we're talking about, is gonna be a key priority. And I really don't see the need to mislabel things uh, as to what they should be. So there is an argument here that as science communicators that we will pitch levels, uh, you know, high level for, you know, grandparents to understand, and then non-techies, and then people just getting into the space, and then the enthusiasts, you can write and design your content around each of those four levels. And there's great written, there's great video for pretty much every topic out there that goes down to each of these four levels. By saying that using mega transfers per second essentially eliminates the top level, I think is disingenuous to that level. It's a realistic understanding of what is actually happening. The fact that it, they've been misguided for so long shouldn't be put on them. It should be put on the people who are communicating the science and the numbers. That brings on to point five. It will confuse everyone. I don't think it will. There is a point at which you have to turn around and say, hey, we've been saying this wrong. It needs to be said right. Six, it would take a massive effort to change. This one is probably 
very true, but I still don't think it should be a barrier into making sure that we're using the right terminology, that we're using mega transfers per second instead of megahertz. One of the issues here is that if you go buy memory, either on Newegg, on Amazon, on your local retailer, even if you go to the memory vendor's website, even if you go to the motherboard manufacturer's website, they still all use megahertz, unfortunately. Some of them might be using mega transfers per second. As part of this video, I actually went into several BIOSes, uh, six of the vendors across seven boards, and out of the seven, six of them were using megahertz, and one of them was using no units at all. And it's actually that last one that I think is the key here. Number seven is that uh, this sort of mislabeling happens in other areas. Uh, people highlight to me to, you know, audio, but I think that shouldn't matter. That's whataboutism. You know, this is about the accuracy of memory and I don't care if something else is wrong. I just want to make sure that this is right. Number eight, I'm being a pedant. Uh, I think this relates back to number one and two. If I'm being a pedant and it doesn't matter, then you won't mind it changing. I don't think it's being pedantic to actually want the correct units on the numbers being used. And number nine, what do I suggest? So if you've watched this video from start to finish, you may think, oh, okay, okay, there's, there's two endpoints here. There's either megahertz or mega transfers per second. I'm proposing a third solution, and that's don't use units whatsoever. For the last five, six, seven, eight years, when I've been writing about memory, I've never used units, at least intentionally. If I say that this kit is 3600, I say it's DDR4 3600. I've said that with all memory. I've said that with mobile memory. I've said that with PC memory. I've said that with server, server memory. If you just say it's 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3600, you get around the need to put any units whatsoever. This means that when we go from DDR to QDR, you can still use the effective transfers per second number, but just don't use any units whatsoever. And it really makes sense. And actually nobody complains. It's the fact that where we are now, so many people use megahertz when it's the wrong unit to use. That's what really grinds my gears in this case. So I know a lot of you probably don't care about this, that I am being a pedant. I'm sorry, this is just the sort of person who I am. I like to see the right units on these things, and I hope that a bunch of you do as well. Please comment below exactly what you think about this situation, whether we should change, whether we shouldn't change, whether this is the right course of action, or maybe there's an alternative course of action that you can think of. I think one of the biggest barriers here is the fact that every memory manufacturer, every motherboard manufacturer, and every PR person probably doesn't know the difference. The engineers do. Whether the people actually writing uh, the stuff that goes public does is another matter. I think that as science communicators, as reviewers, as entertainers that cover technology, we can all strive to do better. And this is, you know, a step in the right direction. And if you reach this far in the video, don't worry, there's no beef between me and Linus. We still get on very well. Uh, he pokes fun at me, I poke fun at him. It's It all goes around. But no, it's really good fun. And it's, it's, it's good to at least have a communication with everybody out there who's communicating this uh, these ideas uh, to you all. Oh no.